When you, I wasn't listening. What? Huh? Hmm? Nothing. Didn't no. say nothing. <laughs> is that got to be edited in, or is that is that good to stay? <laughs> Fishbone Gooder with Tim and Dave. Ow. Cheers. <laughs> oh, snap. Welcome back for the break, everybody. Right. So, yeah, as we left, um, you know, we started, you know, briefly touching base on technology on the boat, you know, as I watch Major League Fishing, I see, you know, 15 different screens, you know, there's a balloon up in the air, they're using so it's, right. it's insane what's being used, and, you know, when I watch it, I'm like, well, that's why they catch more fish than I do. <laughs> I mean, that's obviously, I have to give myself, you know, some reason for it. I'm interested in knowing how it's actually used, sure. you know, with all that gear. Yeah, and it's, like anything else, guys, it's the fishing world is it, it is in constant evolution. When I started fishing, I was using the Humminbird on a five-inch screen, and I fished tournaments out of that forever, and I thought I needed it. And then down imaging came out, and side imaging came out, and, um, you know, it's it's in constant evolution as far as what we can do on a bass field. And, I mean, right now, I think the biggest thing is, too, like, the technology's getting better, but we're... It's opening up doors as to how we see fish react to things. You know, the, the patterns that we previously thought with these fish, um, you know, we're seeing it firsthand that aren't necessarily set in stone like we thought they were. Um, for me, I, I'm, I'm still learning 100%. You know, and, you know, how these fish react and move and things like that. But I run, I run five units. I run two on my dash, three on my bow. Um, I run Lorraine's and Hummingbird on my dash. I run Lorance, Hummingbird. Well, I run Lorance and Hummingbird on my bow too, but I run two Lorance units. Now, on my dash, I originally ran just Lorance. And each company has now now has similar technology. And there's there's different intricacies to the different brands um, that do make them slightly different. Mm-hmm. Um but without kind of diving down a huge wormhole on things, Lorance, in my opinion, has the best waypoint management system. And what I mean by that is not only I mean, do, you, do you save a waypoint like you could on any other unit, but you can set different icons. You say, I can set like a grass icon or a rock icon. Oh, okay. On or different things. And I can pull up that waypoint and write notes in it. And I can pull up that waypoint and put, you know, a, a time and a date or, you know, this tournament Dang. or year or whatever it is. So when I look back at your map and you see 600 waypoints on a lake, you know, sometimes that's overwhelming. I and mean, you can get the picture of where you've caught fish and where you haven't. But to be able to physically pull that up and say, okay, this is exactly what this waypoint is. Or, you know, if you have a system where you can streamline that and say, okay, this is grass, this is rock, this is a big fish, this is a little fish, this is a three pounder, this is a four pounder, whatever it may be, that is huge, you know, when you, when you go back into something. So, you know, Lorance is my go to when it comes to mapping and waypoint. That's so funny. Uh, I have a I'm question so... on that one. When it comes to mapping, that can you put in things also like weather conditions when you marked it? Yeah. And like water temps, so you can search like different water temps. Um, Con- Hundred percent. You can you can make a note and put anything in that note. So that I mean that is huge. I mean, see, like you're going back to a lake, but you're only going back there once a year. You know what I mean? And two years ago, you fished the lake, and to your point, it was you know seventy two degree water temp, and the lake was at twelve foot. You know, and you go back two years later, and you're like, it's seventy three degrees, and the water's at eleven and a half foot, like. You should probably hit those waypoints that you mm-hmm. caught on before. You know, that's it's, it's incredibly helpful when you when you you know rerun things like that. So that's uh, that's why I run Lorance in, in that situation. Um, and so one Lorance on the dash, the Lorance on the bow coordinates with that one, and that's on my that's on my waypoint. That's um, awesome. The uh, so a- I keep grinning, and um, it's what's so so we're we're all sales guys in our day job. Mm-hmm. It's your sales force for fishing. Like, yeah. it's, it's your sales <laughs> CRM. But, it, but that's so much more badass of a, of a CRM system because it's going to help you catch fish. It's not going to help you. Man- it's managing leads. 
You're managing, you're managing your lead. 100%. This is a hot lead. This is a cold lead. This is a hot yes. lead. Years ago. We oh, my God. This waypoint in three <laughs> I'm sitting, I'm sitting touch, here looking at myself should, on the screen. We should and reconnect. Like, and I'm like, and I'm like, oh my god, David, stop grinning! I was like, you look like an idiot. And I couldn't stop. I'm trying not to giggle into the microphone. I was like, oh my god, it sounds like my sales force. I was like, and then in my head, I'm like, if my boss were to ever see this, he'd be like, you don't update your sales force, you idiot. Like, like if I if this was fishing, it would be perfect. It's like you'd have every call would be logged. Every <laughs> I'm like dying. Perfect. Oh God, that's awesome though. But that's that's what it is. You're you're managing your fishing yep. leads and advantages. Yeah, or even, and, I guess and, you could and, even put like this did not work. Like the spot did not work when temp was above this, or exactly. southward wind and killed the spot. You know, it's that's so having funny. that information is invaluable because you know Dave and I fish the same lake every year when we go to Lake Shelbyville, and we always try and fish the same spots. But I mean, the water level it's a reservoir lake like i mean the water could be 20 feet up or 20 feet down when we go right mm-hmm. and we try and fish the same spots every time just because yeah. it's what we know but right we find we have to move around because when that water changes like that having that ability to like make those marks or those notes yeah, yeah. that's that's huge yeah it really does make all the difference in the world because you know from from our end from my end, it would be a lot easier to run the same brand for everything. You know, it really would. But mm-hmm. it, again, like little things like that, little things like the, you know, the higher speed reel, like little, little things that you go into that make all the difference in the world, you know, that that could cut your practice thumb down, you know, by a day. You know, think if, think if you went to that lake and, you know, conditions were similar and you could go back to those, those thoughts, but, you know, think if this year you go up and you mark everything 10 foot lower and then two years from now it's 10 foot lower again and you know you can cut half of the waypoints that you have on your graph out and just go fish what you know was good at 10 foot you know it just it just streamlines again back to efficiency it just makes you more efficient on the water and when you're when you're going out for these tournaments like Bass Pro Tour they get two days you know Elite Series they get three days or three four days three days you know, whatever it is, we got to dissect lakes so quickly, you know, even, even for like BFLs or Toyota series, like, you know, a lot of these guys are working, you know, they, they can't come in, they're not taking a full week off of practice. So you have to dissect a lake and find out how to be competitive in two or three days. And, you know, the, all the advantages you can give to yourself to do so is, you yeah. know, is what can, you got to do. Can you filter your waypoints then? So like if the water temp was... Um, or say you got rain overnight and it fluctuated and you're like, all right, my water temp was 81. Now it's 70, 77. Could you mm-hmm. filter all your waypoints by temp and be like, Hey, last time, let me look at all the, all my waypoints from when the water temperature was, you know, you would clock it 74 to 78 yeah. and be like, I just want to see just those waypoints in those conditions. You can, but you can't directly on the unit. Okay. So what you do is you'd have to export those waypoints Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So say like, you know, we were on the water for a day and it was 72 degrees. You get off the water, you export those, export those waypoints and do some file and say 72 degrees, Harris Chain of Lakes in April or yeah. whatever the, the situation would be. But you can save them that way. So you okay. have the ability to do it with a couple extra steps, but not, not directly on the units themselves. Okay. That's sweet though. That Just to have the ability to do that, because like you said, I mean, there's there's a lot of guys that have forty hour a week jobs that still are trying, you know, they're still enjoying their passion in a tournament, and yeah. you know that could cut down. I mean, I couldn't imagine before uh, being able to log it and everything, doing it doing it on a notebook in a boat in water. Like it's a matter of time till you lose that notebook, right. or whatever, or pad or drop in the lake, not. and then you're really pissed. Yeah. Oh yeah, you lose twenty <laughs> years. <laughs> oh, paper notebook. Yeah, but and, you know, hey, I mean, that, Lawrence, yeah. if you're if you're listening, filters built in. That's right. <laughs> yeah, just thought. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to give us any money, but you know, if you if you if you sent us uh, a boat or something, it would be pretty sweet. No, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even have anything to tow with. Don't send me a boat. Just yeah. <laughs> All right, so we had the Lawrence, and then you said you also had Hummingbird on there as well. Yep. Yeah, Hummingbird. So I run on, on the. On the dash, I run another hummingbird unit. 
and I have that solely set up for 2D down imaging. I have down down imaging sonar, and then I run side scan as well. So I have a screen set up and side scan, 2D sonar, and then your down imaging. Um, and I like I like Hummingbird, and it's again personal preference for the side imaging and down imaging, just because they do have a couple color palettes that I think are able to show things a little bit more clear than some of the other brands. You know, all like Garmin, uh, Lorenz, you know, you name it. These, these other brands have that capability. And I think they do it very effectively. But for me personally, the color palette that Hummingbird offers and kind of the settings that I can tinker with allow me to see things a, l- a little bit more clear, I, I think, than, than some of the other ones. Um, and again, that's all personal preference. But it's, again... It, Seem to go back to efficiency. If I can idle over this hump or this point or whatever at seven miles an hour and I can see everything I need to see and I can roll on to the next one, that's what I need to do. If I got to turn around and do a bunch of laps and donuts on to really pick it apart, you know, I'm losing time out of my practice day to to go and do something that I could have accomplished in, in, you know, in one pass and, and I have to do it in three passes. And, you know, saying that out loud, it makes me sound crazy, but it's really, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know the it, effect of these lakes, these giant lakes that we go to, you know, you got you to be able to do them. Right. So that was a quick question I was going to have, you know, with those dash units, how fast can you be going and still actually get something out of it? Yeah. A six and a half is what I try to keep it at. And that's pretty much what you can get these boats up to and in in still in an idle um, when you get above like six and a half, seven, it gets, un- it's just not very clear. You don't get a good reading. Um, you know, when you fine tune them, you can see not down imaging or side imaging, but you can use your 2D sonar to see the bottom when you're running on plane, you know, and I, I can't do it at like 70 miles an hour. I can do it at like 35, 40 miles an hour, uh, but I can still at least see water depth. And, you know, if there's deep grass, I can identify, you know, hey, that's grass at that speed. Uh, which is which is key to not as much in Florida because you know you, you know it's I use it I use it more up north like Oneida Cham or uh, Champlain and uh, Saint Clair but yeah they could they, and these crafts can do some crazy stuff right now but it's all about efficiency and you know putting the tools in in these guys hands to, to find the biggest fish they can as fast as they can. You can clearly tell Tim has a boat. I don't have a boat. So I'm like, I'm like, holy cow, you could do that? That's a thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's it, wild. Your man said, I mean, that's the, that's the dash setup. That's, that's the, the cockpit. That's what we're looking at. We're yeah. going around, but your, your office, so to speak, is really the front of the boat. And, you know, Lawrence, I have the same capabilities up there as I do at the, you know, at, at the dash, but um, when you look into the hummingbird side, I'm not, I don't run down imaging and side imaging on my hummingbird up front. I run what's called hummingbird 360. Mm-hmm. And that is a, the same capability in theory as side imaging. You're getting a picture to the left and to the right, but you now have almost like a, a radar, a sonar going around 360 degrees around your boat giving you the same picture that the side imaging when you're moving. So I can sit in one spot with my power poles down and get a 360 degree idea of what's going on in my boat at that time. Dang. That, that's probably what I use the most out of it, um, especially down in lakes where you're fishing grass and, and, you know, there's a lot of cover around where it's tough to think, actually see fish. That 360 is, is the deal. Dude, that's, yeah. that's wild. So I'm rocking you know, a Lawrence Hook 2. Um, is my, uh, my I, fish finder that I have. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that, man. I'll tell you what, there's a time and a place for 2D sonar, and it gets overlooked. I'll tell you what. Yep. Yeah, when, you're, when you're cranking on some tunes and uh, talking <laughs> smack, you know, and you're like, I don't see anything. Let's go. Let's go another 100 feet, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, hey, I love that. Heck yeah. Like I said, you know, I made my big investment to a new trolling motor with the spot lock and the tracking mm-hmm. so I can actually like, set tracks and run back and forth. I said, you know, I got tired of being the guy in the front of the boat running the trolling motor while 
people like Dave got to sit in the back and fish. I had a great time every time too. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, you know, and and speaking of that, what uh so you got your setup on your boat, you got your office. What's the song that comes on when you're in your office and you're like, Oh boy, I'm um this is a nine eleven. This is a nine pound eleven. <laughs> Let's do this. Like what, what song? Cause I, I got a couple in my head, right? Like I hear, I'm like, Oh, these fish are screwed right now. Like this is my, <laughs> this is my boat jam. You know, I'm, I'm blanking out here, but I can, I can hear the song. I'm just losing it. It's, it's an old Florida, Georgia line song. Oh, those are good. What? Oh, okay. huh? Is it called? The, oh, the up, down, up, up down, down, up. Yeah. yeah. Don't sing it too Up much. Down here. That is yeah. that is a yeah. good one. That's a good one. Aaron Trouble. Aaron Trouble when that comes on. Dude, when their first album came out, we we had a Shelbyville trip that year. We listened to that album back and front. It was like it was their, it was like their <laughs> their like Nashville pop country album. It went so good with like those citrus. This is so lame. With citrus Coors lights yes. on 90 degree day, man. That that, that was that damn, is. baby. <laughs> Like, edit that out 21 <laughs> years old Woo, oh boy <laughs> I, love it. I love it god yeah god yeah that's awesome and then you know now we're talking about music on it is it is it kosher or is it not cool if you roll up to a spot in a tournament and you got a song you're just like <laughs> jamming to a song because i i always just assumed it's because there's like you see them on tv so there's a camera they want to hear what you're saying yeah. Stuff and like if you were like, hey, hey, turn that thing off. I'm I need to crank some music and I need to actually get in the mindset right now to focus right. on. Stuff. Or is that is it not allowed to listen to music? Or so that's that's a that's a kind of a funny funny that you asked that question. Oh, I've been knowing it for a while, and I did like three years as the I think in the Northern series, the Toyota series when I was living up there and. Mm-hmm. Um, I was fishing Lake Champlain, and I got paired with this guy who was leading the tournament. He went on went on to win the tournament, and where he's got this nice like bass cat boat. It's like all rigged out. It's got the stereo going. And he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on just for the drive because we were making like an hour run. So we get there, you know, listen to music the whole way. Like, this guy's awesome. This is cool. Best mm-hmm. ride I've ever had. Great boat. We're listening to music the whole time. Like. It's fun. So we get to the spot and he turns it off, you know, and he, we're going about five minutes, 10 minutes or so. Like, I mean, he's leaving the tournament. He's crushing fish the day before. So you can see him like, you know, the voices are coming in. And he's like, man, I'm worried this fish went. And all of a sudden he like drops his rod and looks at me. He's like, don't worry, the fish won't care. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Comes up, turns on the stereo. <laughs> in the middle of this tournament, we're fishing for 50 grand. And I'm like, or if you say so, man. And then, like, not even five minutes later, wow. You're kidding. <laughs> he half an hour while we're, we're like, bumping ACDC in the middle of this giant. Oh, and that's I'm, awesome. Like, I'm like, this, oh, I've been told lies my whole life. Like, you yeah. fish like music or this guy is just on him so good, it doesn't matter. But right. he ended up winning, winning that tournament. I guarantee you he was listening to ACDC on the tournament Sunday, so. That's amazing. Just, and that's, don't worry. The fish won't care. That's amazing. <laughs> it was, it was wild, it? Like, tough, toughest thing anybody's ever said to me. Like, this guy is a badass. Dude, one, that's like, that's like one time it was, it was winter. Me and Tim were at this beautiful little bar in our hometown called Town Tap. We got an Uber. The end of the Uber, and he's dropping us off at Tim's house. He goes, want to see something cool? <laughs> and it's that same thing. And the guy lit off a brick of fireworks in Tim's oh, street my wife at like was two in the morning. Stuff. His wife mur- about <laughs> murdered us. Every dog in the neighborhood was barking. But it's that's all I can imagine is he's, he's like he's like, don't worry about it. Like it, we're good. Or, yeah. Or the uh, uh, he literally took my out of mortar, like put it in the middle of my street and lit it. My subdivision. The- <laughs> it was insane. It was insane. But that's amazing because I and I'm and I ask because I'm like, well, music is vibration fish respond to vibration so is there something or the other part was i was like if you're on a good spot and you know you are and you're just not catching them yet and someone's trolling up to you or getting too close just start blasting some ludicrous or something (laughs) like i ain't staying here for that you know you could like scare them away with some ludicrous or 
you know, and I, I've a, seen that in tournaments too. And you know, just to pivot real quick for another question about tournaments, the etiquette, all that. Mm-hmm. You know, people creeping up on other people's spots. I've seen literally arguments on TV where two people are too close and people yelling at each other because yeah. someone comes up to their spot or that's where they are. Like, how is that really managed? That is a tough thing. Um, and it's very dependent. And I guess there's no real right answer to that. And, and it's unfortunate that there's not. Um, but 90% of the guys you come in contact with, uh, they're very cordial. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to chase you off a spot, so to speak. Nobody's going to say, you know, like, we, we can't share this or, or whatever it is. But it's it's also situational at the same time. So, you know, I've I've been in situations where I'm, I'm fishing a tournament and I'm making a cast that if I don't land the cast in an area the size of a truck, then you won't get bit. Okay? And you're way offshore in the middle of nowhere. You know, if I had somebody pull up and try to make that same cast sit next to me, I'd be upset. I'd be, I'd be. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'd tell them about it. You know what I mean? If I got there first, you know what I mean? That's, that's kind of your territory. Now, if I leave, it's all yours. You know what I mean? Feel free to come in. Like, it's not my spot. But yeah. at the time, don't pull up next to my boat and, and make a pinpointed cast like that. Or don't try to make a pinpointed cast like that. Mm-hmm. Now, Again, going back to the Harris chain, I was fishing in one of the lakes that was that was very crowded. And I mean, there's 250, 200, or 260 boats in the tournament. You're not getting away from that. Like you are, yeah. you are around people and that's that. But there was a group of about five of us that were in, you know, very close proximity. You know, we, we were never close. In, there were a couple of times that we were close enough we could hit each other with a cast if we wanted to. Um, but all very cordial, you know, everybody kind of worked around each other. I kind of had the position that I wanted to be in. So I kept my boat where I knew I needed to be. And, you know, vice versa, I'm sure guys that practiced there before and caught some fish had their own little lineup that they wanted to be on, but nobody, nobody, we were all very cordial, but to your point, it's, it's, it's not always like that. There are some guys out there that think that, you know, if they're fishing in an area, they need a hundred yards to the left and a hundred yards to the right. You know, and that just that just doesn't happen not when there's 260 boats in a tournament. Right. Yeah. So it, it does. It can get a little heated. I've personally never been in a in an altercation that lasted longer than "Hey man, like what are you doing?" And and one guy gets gets the picture. I've you know I think I've been pretty respectful of everybody coming not coming in on it just because you know it's just it's a, it's like it's like any other sport. You know what I mean? Baseball, there's unwritten rules. Hockey, there's unwritten. Right. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the unwritten rule side of fishing. Like somebody's there before you, don't come up on them if it's a spot that doesn't allow that to happen. You know, if he leaves, it's fair game. If he doesn't leave, you don't get on it, you know? Yeah. So. Huh. And then with that, I guess, um, have you ever been in a tournament and something happens or or you do something, whether it's intentional or planned or unintentional and you're like oh my god that worked like or or something clicks and you're like i wouldn't i you know i can't believe i just did that but i'm so happy i did because i didn't think you know even even throwing this tr- you know you got a you got a bag of baits and you need a new trailer you throw a random thing on it's a, a horrible color combination or whatever and you I throw it you're really like oh god i didn't expect this and you're like oh all right this might have just changed my whole day or yeah. i saved my afternoon have you ever had a moment like that? I was, at, I was really wondering where you're going with that line of thought, Dave, at first. Um, what, Did have it you sound ever perverted? done something that you were like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that? Or that. I'm like, <laughs> where are you going with this? Oh, did you ever like use a certain rig? Okay. I, was, I get okay. it now. <laughs> I started that sentence not knowing how I was going to get to the finish line, but I got there, so you should leave me alone. You know? <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I honestly, I think that that happens more like when you have a like a like an epiphany or a breakthrough in practice, um, or even on tournament day, like it usually comes from that type of situation. It's not, you know, you know sometimes it can be a progression of baits, but a lot of times it's like, I'm gonna throw this, yeah, let's see if it works. We'll give 10 casts, 
Um, first time, you know, that, that situation came up, it was actually, I was fishing a regional event in, in up in Western Pennsylvania. And I had these fish like dialed in, like check yeah. out a couple times. There was a one cast deal. It was, it was actually that truck size area. Yeah. So like, if I hit this area, I'm getting hit every single time. Well, pulled up there on tournament day and I was catching this fish on a Carolina rig and, you know, an hour into the day of working around this area, I was trying to figure out if the fish moved, trying to figure out what was going on. I could not catch a bass. Like I can see them on my graph. I think that was 2D sonar. I've seen them on that. Like if I can see them on that, they're great. right. And could not catch fish. So I pulled out a giant jig, Buckeye Lewis mop jig. I whipped it out there. Didn't even hit the bottom. And I pursued really? fish every cast for the next like two hours. And it was, I think up, up north on that lake in the summer, it was a four fish limit. And I think I weighed in just under 20 pounds. Dang. At the time, like, it was my, my biggest limit I've ever weighed. But I flat out crushed him on that jig. And that's, you know, you want, you want to talk about like, how do you get sponsorships? How do you move to the next level? How do you do mm-hmm. things? I was 17 years old. I won that tournament on that Buckeye Lewis mop jig. Took a picture of myself with that jig, with the trophy, sent it to Buckeye, said, I'd love to work with you guys. Just won the biggest tournament that I've ever won on your jig. Let's start. Let's and that's, and I'm, you know, fast forward I'm 10 years later, 12, how old am I? 12 years, <laughs> 10 years later now, I'm still with the company. You know, I'm still working with them and, you know, that's sweet. little things like that. That's sweet. What was, what was that lure called? The Buckeye buck- Mop Jig. Mop Jig. All right, I'm writing that down. I'm going to have to do one of those uh, worldwide internet searches. <laughs> No, I, I know what you mean. Like when you see the fish there, you're like, I could jump in with a pocket knife and probably stab <laughs> one of these fish if I wanted to, but they will not bite when I'm throwing at them. Yeah, it's the worst. That's like the worst one. And that's like acting. And that you can see them, and just they won't they won't bite anything half the time. So let's jump back. You know, you were 17, mm-hmm. and you won. Yeah, you know, your first tournament. I feel like you know. We need to take a breather and, you know, I need to eat finally some of this pizza that I bought yeah. um, eventually. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, all right. So let me summarize that for you there. Um, <laughs> Tim's dying of in, hunger. That's right. He needs, a, he needs a 15 minute break and uh, he doesn't want anyone to. It's, it's so it's not that he's hungry, really. It's, it's not that he's shy about eating on camera. I don't think he wants to be on camera for another 25 minutes where he's just picking pepperoni out of his beard. <laughs> no, I think that is that right, Tim? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, OK, cool. I'm not going to say you're right, but I won't say you're wrong. I can admit to it. But... Yeah. No. This is like this is like a seven, seven week old beard I got going on here, boys. Yeah, you got a baby face there, Dave. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Go eat, you scoundrel. Fishbone Gooder with Tim and Dave.